What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Your host, your boy, George McKay, back here on another Rewind. And as we get closer to the July premiere of MLW, there's only one person we could have back here on Rewind, and that is the reigning, defending, Caribbean champion, the most marketable one, Richard Holiday. Richard, welcome back to MLW Rewind. It feels good to be back, um, particularly because it seems like you have uh, a new co-host. And apparently, just the word on the street here is that this co-host drinks coffee. He does. Is that, does. Is that true? For you? And I drink it black, just, just like yourself. I'm also a, a connoisseur. Cheers. Oh. Cheers. Okay. You're already off to the right foot. Already off on the right foot. Perfect. As you all know, that's my podcast life partner, Uncle Bobby B. So, Richard, the first thing I got to ask is, how are you doing after the attack from Gino Medina on the season finale of MLW Rewind? I know you went to the hospital, concussion protocol. How are you doing? You know, I mean, just talk about talk about the bottom of the barrel, scum of the earth. Just a preposterous move by the undynastic Gino. Really brings back bad memories, but I mean... Yeah, I went to the hospital. You know, I was concussed. I was seriously hurt. He gave me a DDT on the wooden floor. I mean, I, I went head first. My dynastic head went straight first into that floor. Um, and I was seeing stars. And, you know, it took a lot of caffeine to revive me, to get back to, to normal levels, just to get back to neutral. But I'm feeling good, you know. I I'm doing what I have to do from a recovery standpoint. Of course, I am a prime athlete. Of course, I'm extraordinarily dynastic. I spare no expense when it comes to my body, and to make sure that I'm doing all of the right things: getting cryotherapy, getting Swedish massages, getting deep tissue massages, getting active release therapy on my neck, on my skull, everything that I need to possibly do in order to be ready for July 10th. And I swear, if Gino even thinks about looking at me at the at in Philadelphia. I will slap him with a cheesesteak so fast, he'll go from Pat's to Gino's. Well, it, it was a, an absolutely uh, dastardly, unwarranted, cowardly uh, sneak attack. I was extremely concerned when, when I saw it, and uh, I'm glad to hear that, uh, you know, you're, you're doing better. Uh, and and uh, I'm curious if, if uh, there's going to be some repercussions. <laughs> repercussions? <laughs> it's going to be a little bit more than repercussions. My friend, my cough, my black coffee drinking friend, there's going to be a lot more than repercussions because I am the son of a very particular individual. I am sure you are aware of that. That would be my lawyer slash my father. And trust me, we will muster up something. We will dig through every law book that we possibly have to in order to find something to sue Gino's undynastic ass. And I promise you that will happen. Well, will that also include a slander because of what he said to uh, Miss Altoot? I mean, that was horrible. There's a lot of bad blood there, but I, I'm sure you didn't appreciate the way he spoke to her either. Yeah, I, I don't really care what he said to Alicia, um, but if I can get him for slander, I'll do it. Just throw it in there. It's, it's, it's like, uh, it's just uh, the cherry on top, if you would. Speaking of Alicia, I do have to ask, what are your thoughts on the um, unfortunate, uh, you know, you tried to show her the marketing campaign that you were working on. And we got the unfortunate uh, combination of hammer dick. Uh, how did you feel about that? I mean, I have to ask. The MLW Rewind fans want to know. You know, the consumers want to know. And it's, it was, that was one of those things where, you know what, uh, I was trying to be very lighthearted with Alicia. I was trying to have a little fun with her. She wasn't annoying me that much on that particular moment. And I think she took my kindness for weakness my vulnerability, you know, because I'm a huge baby face now, as you know, the consumers absolutely love me. And I'm kind of transitioning right now into this baby face role, which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, again, getting used to it. But, you know, that wasn't a hammer deck. That was art. That was sophistication. That was beauty. That was a moneymaker. And I'm not going to listen to her. I think we're going to print that. That's a marketing campaign that I truly believe in. Well, I believe in it as well. I thought it was great. I mean, you put that on a t-shirt, you put that on a poster and you and Hammerstone sign that, you know, Dynasty right there. I love it. I would buy that in a heartbeat. I think it's worth every penny that comes out. But I just, I feel the, the vulgarity was a little much for MLW. Don't you agree with that? Well, I don't know if the vulgarity was too much for Major League Wrestling, but what I will say is that Major League Wrestling and, and the people that are employed by it, AKA Alicia Atute, need to understand 
that when I present something, I believe in it. I am a marketing expert. I have a degree in marketing. You know what that means? That means I am more intelligent than you. I'm smarter than you when it comes to marketing. I understand it better than anybody in that building, better than anybody in that company. I mean, honestly, if I wasn't so busy worried about my own career and the dynasty's career, I could probably take on head of marketing for Major League Wrestling, but I don't want to, right? I don't want to. So I'm not too worried about the vulgarity of it, but I do know that, again, it's a moneymaker. It really is. It's a hell of a design. Speaking of dynasty, um, there was a, you know, a vignette that was cut a couple weeks prior to Hammer Dick, where Hammerstone kind of said something that might have been a little bit inappropriate to you as well when he asked point blank if you had a crush. So I've got to address that. Is there tension between you and Alicia in terms of maybe a likability factor there at all, like Hammerstone well- brought up? I mean, it's no question that Alicia is undoubtedly attracted to me because at the end of the day, um, you know, who isn't? So I don't blame her for being extremely attracted to me and being nervous around me and kind of having that grade yard, uh, you know, that um, that grade school kind of playground, you know, crush that she has on me. It's totally fine. It's innocent. I get it. Um, in terms of me, I'm way too focused for that. You know, I don't do crushes. So Hammer, he wants to throw that little tidbit out there. I think he was just messing with me. I think he was just trying to, you know, play a little joke on me because that's what the bros do. That's what the dynasty bros do, you know, uh, you know, but no, no, I don't, I, I don't have a crush on Alicia and I, you know, I hope you don't think that I do. I don't, I don't have a crush on her. I don't think at all. I just wanted to clear the air and address the point. Now that we've addressed, we don't have to address it anymore, but I do want to address with you this Davy Richards, number one overall draft pick. What are your thoughts on that? In this open draft, as we go, as the weeks go by, we get closer to July, closer to Philadelphia, closer to crowds. Are you keeping your eye out on any of the new faces coming in that could be an addition to Dynasty, given the right person? Absolutely. I'm always keeping tabs on, on the landscape of Major League Wrestling. I think, I think the acquisition of Davey Richards is, is quite big. I think that's a hell of an acquisition for the company and for the brand. And I think he is going to attract some new consumers to to the company and you know we're on vice tv now which is we're just getting bigger and bigger so when you get bigger and better your roster has to get bigger and better and i think we did that on night one of the ML, mlw open draft and we added davy richards so we'll see where it goes from there but i will say this i think that the people coming into major league wrestling have their eyes on me have their eyes on hammerstone because we're the ones that have the gold we have the keys to the castle so as the caribbean champion I'm sure that I have a huge target on my back. Well, not not just the Caribbean champion, also the most marketable, the face of MLW, and by far the most elite level athlete competing in MLW and, and in the greater wrestling world today. So I, I think every one of them is, is going to have their eye on on what you've got. But um, I don't I don't think you'll have a, an issue dealing with any of them. Yeah, without question. And listen, I love the fact. Uh, you know, that, that, that you are uh, pandering to me a little bit. I totally appreciate that. I think that's what you should do. That's what a good co-host should do. You should suck up to me. You should. You know, you should just train me in compliments because I deserve it. And they're all factual as well. You're not saying anything out of line. You're not saying anything wrong. I am the best athlete in MLW. I am the most marketable man in MLW. I am the face of this company. You know, when I wear this T-shirt, it means something. It means something. It absolutely does. It means that the face of the company is showing the company what he can do for them. Just by you wearing that t-shirt right now on Rewind, our stock is going up because you're on it. Every time Richard Holiday graces us with his presence, we know what we're getting. And the value that we're getting is just our stock goes up. And it's not riding your coattails. It's just what you bring to the table. Yeah, there's a reason that you keep asking me back. And, you know, I come back, you know, out of my good graces. I clear up time out of my schedule. But, you know... You are one of the very few podcasts, and I mean this. I'm not just saying this. One of the very few podcasts that I don't hate and I do slightly enjoy coming on. So it is my pleasure, way more your pleasure, but it is my pleasure to come on and assist in the ratings of this podcast. And we appreciate it. I know my new co-host does. When I told him that we had you coming back for the third time, he was over the moon, prepared, uh, preparation, texting me every day questions things that we should focus on points that we should hit. And um, so far we've hit those points. Um, Going on to another point that I need to bring up is um, 
Uh, obviously, Savio Vega, we don't have to deal with him anymore. He's dead. He's, dead. he's done. He's done. But Gino, he's in the back of your head. He's there. I'm not saying he has space because he doesn't. But there will be repercussions, not only outside of the ring with whatever your lawyer slash father can do, but also inside the ring. July 10th, if Gino shows up, if Gino is there, if Gino is saying, come out, will you answer the call? Will you go out and will you deal with Gino the way we know you can deal with Gino? Here's the thing about Gino is that Gino is afraid of me. And Gino also understands that I fired him. And Gino also understands that I beat him. Now, put all of that into one. And what do you get? You get an undynastic little Spanish weasel named Gino Medina. That's why he attacked me from behind. That's why he tried to come out, interrupt my interview, my post-match victory interview, defending my Caribbean championship, a championship that he wishes that he could hold. He interrupted that interview and blindsided me and nearly gave me whiplash. Actually, he did give me whiplash. He gave me a concussion too. You know, he almost broke my neck. He almost ended my career. Could you imagine if he ended my career? The most marketable career in all of professional wrestling? I don't even want to think about that. Don't even, don't even retort. The damages would be millions. Yeah, don't, don't even retort to that. It's totally fine. But if Gino wants to go out to the ring and call me out, honestly, he would just be embarrassing himself. Call me out for what? Call out the guy who beat you. Call out the guy who fired you. Call out the guy who gets all the pretty mamacitas. You should have. He talks about mamacitas. You should have seen the ones that he used to try and go for. <laughs> I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even look at it. I, I. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't want to talk about what I would do with these mamacitas. Okay. I and I, I won't. I won't ask any further questions about that because we don't need to know about what Gino's taste is. We know what your tastes are, and your tastes are nothing but perfection. 150%. Now, um, Corp Bauer. Corp Bauer has done some amazing, phenomenal things to grow the brand on the backs of the talent that he has. Um, is there anybody right now currently in the roster that you would not mind giving a shot at the Caribbean Championship? Like, obviously, you would defend it with ease. But is there anyone that, if somebody came up to you and said, you know what, Richard, if, if, you, if you would honor me the right, I would like to challenge you for the title. Is there one person or two people that you might consider granting a shot at your caribbean championship the stock by the way you have raised that cha that championship is the the highest ranked championship next to the heavyweight championship it, it's absolutely. the most prestigious championship in mlw there you go yes yeah. yes yeah i like the way that you said prestigious and not prestigious uh, i'm going to steal that and claim it as my own just so you know but yes it is the most prestigious title in all of champ in, in all of major league wrestling if there is somebody that you know, I always say this on podcasts. I'm not one of those individuals who, uh, you know, clamors for dream matches or or says, you know, I wish I can get in the ring with this person because I know that other people are saying that about me and I'd rather have them just do that. But you know what, Davey Richards, you want to come into the company? You want to think, you know, that you're this new big signee? You know, MLW stock got raised because of individuals like me. I'm on the, I'm on the Mount Rushmore of Major League Wrestling, Okay. Actually, the Mount Rushmore of, of Major League Wrestling is myself, Hammer, Max, and then the fourth head is just us all together on one. Okay, this was built on the dynasty. But Davey, you want to be if, if he wants to be the first person to sign with Major League Wrestling. Now, listen, I'm not throwing that match out there. I don't want this to be spread as a rumor. I don't want this, you know, uh, as a tabloid or, or or clickbait or anything like that. He asked a question. I gave an answer. Now, that is somebody who I think, you know, you come in, you want to test the limits of Major League Wrestling. Here you go. What's a better challenge than the Caribbean champion? I'm not going to disagree with that choice at all. I think that's a fantastic choice. Um, you being as as tight yet you are with Hammer and everything like that, what's his mindset going into July? Because there's a lot of unfinished business there as well. Yeah, his mindset going into July is I think he's squarely focused on, on Fatu. I think, I think that is coming to a boiling point. Um, I, you know, Hammer has a lot on his plate. You know, Hammer, Hammer is the type of guy who's leading the charge with me. It's not easy to lead the charge. You know, and it's not easy to lead the charge when you have a huge target on your back. And him as the open weight champion, the longest reigning champion in the history of Major League Wrestling, he has a huge target on his extremely wide back. So, I mean, he has a huge back. You got to think if that target is filling up the entirety of his back, <laughs> that's a pretty big target. So, you know, Hammer has a lot on his plate. And I don't want to speak for him or, and where his mindset is at. I know that he's 100% focused. 
heading into July. He's 100% ready heading into July. He's in the best shape of his entire life. I was just with him this past weekend, and he is just looking fantastic. I told him he looks like a Mortal Kombat character. He's in the best shape of his entire life. And I honestly, I, I do not rue the individual who gets in the ring with him in July. Uh, absolutely not. I think uh, that's going to be a match for the ages. And uh, speaking of this weekend, we were actually watching you. Rob was over at my place and we were watching you this weekend at GSW. And uh, I picked you for the win. And it was unfortunate. It did not go your way. You did not get pinned. That's what sucks about Fatal 4 Ways is that you didn't have a chance to really be involved in that outcome because you were dealing with somebody on the outside. You were dealing with Maddox on the outside. But Hammer defended his title and he won. I know. I know that you will be going back after that dream open weight title for sure. Cause uh, Lebowski's a great inaugural champion, but we only know the stock of that belt gets raised when it's around the waist of Richard holiday. Lebowski? Yeah. I, I, I hit the 2008, you know, the consumers live in attendance, the consumers at home knew it was over. You know, the 2008 was executed to perfection. Th that referee's hand was coming down for three. And then in you know, Tyson of course, um, had to stick his nose where it didn't belong. You know, I beat him at the last show, and he was very envious that I was going to become the champion. So he had to ruin, you know, ruin everybody's night and, and, and quite possibly the rest of the evening. So, um, you know, that that was just a, a truly unfortunate event. But at the end of the day, just like, you know, every great champion, every great warrior, I shake it off. I know that the best is yet to come, as my man Frank Sinatra once said. Yeah, Absolutely. That I can't disagree with anything there. Uh, in terms of um, the next steps for you, uh, the next steps for the Caribbean Championship, um, stock's already been raised. Uh, you know, it's on the map. You put it on the map because of who you are and how marketable you are. Um, will you be looking to step into, say, the open weight realm? Because if Hammerstone is, becomes the heavyweight champion, which I'm almost ensuring that he will, uh, the open weight title then therefore would be vacated at that point would you be willing to say darn or honor that one as well as the caribbean championship i mean you can never have enough gold as the most marketable one well i'm not so sure that the championship would be vacated i think that hammerstone can you know he has very broad shoulders i think that he can manage the weight of both championships now in the rare instance that the the championship does become vacated and again this is not clickbait um i do not believe that it will um but if it did out of pure happenstance and the only rightful person to have it would be me to keep that championship dynastic. Yeah. Again, I, I don't disagree. Have you ever thought about going after the middleweight champion? I mean, Myron Reed is now a two-time champ. That could be something that a record that you would love to squash, right? I mean, first two-time champ in MLW history. Yeah. I mean, you know, the middleweight championship is, is obviously divided by a, a weight class and a weight division. And, you know, as of right now, I am a very lean, um, very um, aesthetically pleasing 237 pounds. So I don't think that I am going to be getting down to the middleweight realm. Um, I suppose if I truly wanted to enter a camp and, and, and cut down to the weight class, then myself versus Myron Reed would be quite an interesting matchup for that championship. However, as of right now, I, I am securely in the heavyweight division, so I don't believe that that would be something on the horizon. But again, never say never. Of course, my Lord Flash father could, of course, write something in there and, you know, add a little provision that maybe this is possible. Maybe I, you know, maybe I make weight. But who knows? Again, your lawyer slash father has done many things and, and, and the benefit of you as well as the benefit of the company. What does your lawyer slash father say about that gatekeeper clause that Joseph Samuel was able to put on the heavyweight championship? That's a clause that your lawyer slash father could easily maneuver around if he wanted to. Well, 100 percent. And, you know, as of right now, I don't believe that it's come across his table. You know, he's such a busy guy and dealing with other matters, but. I'm sure if we wanted to get our, our, our stick our noses in that and get deep into the weeds, we could. Um, it's nothing. It would be light work for him, I'm sure. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. Um, a couple other questions, Richard, and then obviously we'll let you go enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, Azteca Underground, we finally got to see the big reveal of El Jefe. Um, nothing has crossed Dynasty's plate to worry about Azteca Underground, but knowing now who El Jefe is, um, there's moves being made. And everyone's going to have a tiger on the back, especially anyone with gold. So that pretty much falls squarely on every member of Dynasty. 
You both have gold. You both have targets. Are you worried about anyone from Azteca Underground getting involved in any of the Dynasty's business? Um, I'm not worried, but I am anticipating that, yes, of course, you know, they, they're they're going to want to come in and make a name for themselves and, you know, try and take over the company. I think myself in particular, the Caribbean Championship is going to be quite enticing uh, to the members of Azteca Underground, um, simply just because of the lineage, uh, possibly. But, you know, I'm not worried. I am a champion. I'm a fighting champion. Um, and just like any great baby face, I am not worried. No, and you shouldn't, you really shouldn't be, but always being aware. I mean, always being aware. And that's what you've mentioned. You are always aware. Yes, very aware. Uh, in terms of the rest of the open draft and leading up to July 10th, how excited, we'll go to an open draft question in a second, but how excited are you to be performing in front of the consumers again? I mean, that's got to be huge, right? Yeah, you know, to have the consumers back in the ECW arena, is on July 10th is going to be such a magical moment. And now that I'm a baby face and I'm embracing the consumers and the consumers absolutely love me, I think that the roof is going to explode when I come out. I think it's going to be a grand entrance that, you know, I'm really going to milk. So, you know, we, we better have a lot of TV time for my entrance because I'm just going to really feel the energy of all the consumers. And it, it's going to be really a night to remember really a night to remember you should be if obviously if you can purchase the tickets you should be there live and, and be a true consumer i would love to but right now with the border still closed where we are it, it may be difficult by july but you know as soon as the borders open we're definitely going to come down and uh enjoy the presence of the most marketable one in the future for both of us for sure um in terms of the rest of the open draft now you've mentioned that you're always keeping your eye out for, you know, the next member of dynasty, anybody that could, that could be a member of dynasty, if they're worthy enough, what is the criteria that you're looking for out of anybody coming in the open draft? I mean, Davey Richards is enticing for sure, but he's not dynastic. We know this, but right. what, what would you have to like, how would any of these new draftees, these new roster members coming in, what would they have to have? Because you and hammer really have it all. So what would this new person have to have to be even considered to be in Dynasty? Well, you know, as I mentioned in the past, when I go into recruitment mode, I do it based off opportunity, not necessity. And, you know, as of right now, I don't think that it's necessary to recruit anybody to the Dynasty. However, I will say if an opportunity arises, if I see somebody with the intangible dynastic qualities that you cannot teach, that you cannot buy, that you cannot learn, and of course, there's an opportunity. I'm a businessman. I strike when the iron's hot. But as of right now, I'm not so sure that anybody, and now listen, I don't know who the other individuals that are coming in. If there are any, I'm not so sure. But of course, I will always be aware. Um, but as of right now, I don't believe that there's any necessity behind a new member of the dynasty. Right. And I also heard that Court Bauer is definitely looking to up his commentary team, possibly replacing some people in the commentary team. I mean, Obviously, you wouldn't be heartbroken if Alicia was, say, replaced and somebody fresh and maybe more of your liking uh, was involved in that process. Yeah, I mean, I mean Alicia is, uh, you know, she's, she's definitely made her fair share of mistakes in the past. Um, and again, I tried to be lighthearted with her. Um, I don't know if I want to see her get fired right now. Um, maybe... Um, you know, disciplined a little bit more so she could learn how to, you know, properly address me when I bring a marketing campaign. But um, I don't know if I want to see her get fired right now. Um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see about that. And uh, in terms of the, uh, that awesome poster, when can we expect it for the consumers to, like, I, I want to purchase it. When can we expect that poster to be released? Soon, very soon. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Rob, I know that you've got some questions boiling or percolating. We have a few minutes left. Is there anything that you would like to ask the most marketable one? I would just like to know, uh, being the dynastic individual that you are with COVID, hopefully uh, soon to be off in the uh, horizon. What are you looking most forward to for the remainder of this year and going into next year? What, what can we expect from the most marketable one going forward? Well, there's a lot to expect, and that's a tremendous question. You know, I think that one of the most important things to me is, is the fact that travel is coming back 
and that, you know, everybody can feel safe going out and traveling. So as we go into different cities and different towns across the country, I know I have a packed schedule for the remainder of the year and I'll be visiting some new cities. Uh, it's to visit the local coffee shop and see, you know, what I can, uh, you know, get my hands on in terms of the best lattes or cortados or cappuccinos or macchiatos that the area has to offer. Of course, um, like any great businessman, um, there are some business ventures that I have right now um, that may or may not pertain to the aforementioned coffee that we were just speaking about. And uh, that would just be something that I would say to possibly be on the lookout for um, because you just never know what I'm going to do. Well, no, you have a diverse portfolio, right? I mean, uh, I always say the, the only solid bet, the only guaranteed return on your investment is invest in Richard Holiday. Smart man. I should go public just so you could actually invest. But yes, um, of course, you know, theoretically, there is no better bet than to bet on Richard Holiday. And we have bet on Richard Holiday from day one. We have been all in. You know this. You know, well, at least I have. My former co host, uh, he had some demons in his closet, and we're just going to leave it at that. We know about the yeah. tea drinking. We know about all the nonsense that was there. Yeah, a so, lot of nonsense. A lot of nonsense. I mean, NCD was coined because of that individual. So it's yeah, it must be good for you to be around just solid coffee drinkers at this point. Yeah, just just solid individuals, you know, um, solid. You did a good job replacing NCD. Thank you. Much appreciated. Well, when I go into recruitment mode, much like yourself, Richard, I look at what I could bring to the table. And the, what I brought to the table was the one and only Uncle Bobby B. And I knew he was going to be an asset. Yeah, you recruit based off opportunity, not necessity. Um, you know, there was an opportunity for you to, you know, to upgrade your commentary booth, uh, for lack of a better term. And, and of course, listen, NCD, you know, I'm not throwing any shade at you. I just think that you should have a sip of, uh, of some coffee at, at one point in your life. It might change it. Absolutely would. It would definitely take years off his face. That's a hundred percent for sure. He would be a lot younger. For sure. A lot younger. Yeah. Rip that, rip that red sack hat off, off his hat. Or what was it? Mets or red? I don't even remember. It was the either one of them. Either one of them. Just rip it off, drink some coffee. That right there is going to improve your life, you know, three times. Uh, oh, yank that on, you're better. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, I, I, again, I'm not going to debate because uh, there would be no debate required because we all know where we stand. Richard, before we go, uh, please shout out your socials. And again, um, let the uh, consumers know where they can get your fantastic merch from your great coffee mug, which I do have. It's in the wash right now, but I did finally get it in. As I promised, I got it. And, um, you know, your T-shirts and obviously that poster. And don't forget, Richard, when that poster comes, please make sure you DM me so I can get my order in. I want one of the first runs, Richard. I don't want a second or third printing. I want a first printing. Absolutely no problem. You know, the consumers, of course, can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Most Marketable. It's my handle on both. And then, of course, we're coming up on Memorial Day weekend here. Listen, I don't know when this podcast is going to drop. I'm assuming it's going to be before Memorial Day. Um, and if it is, then go on to ProWrestlingTees.com. There's some sale. I don't know the code. I'm sure you can look it up. I'm sure it's right on the home screen. Type in Richard Holiday. Buy yourself a, a new 2008 shirt. I think the 2008 shirt is one of the best designs I've ever put out there. There's more out there. Go on MLWShop.com. Buy my Dynastic Coffee Mug. Buy my Rarified Air T-shirt. Just buy it all. Be a consumer. Absolutely fantastic. And as always, guys, you know our show, uh, George McKay, Straight Talk Wrestling, on Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube, where you can find the MLW Rewind podcast, and at underscore Straight Talk on Twitter. And Uncle Bobby B, shout out your socials as well. Oh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, the real Uncle Bobby B. That's it. Absolutely. Short, simple, and sweet to the point. Well, Richard, thank you again for taking time out. And you know, uh, as we get into uh, the new season of MLW, Rewind is firmly behind you. We are firmly behind the dynasty. We're firmly behind everything. Because here, from day one, when I screwed up, I have now been breathing in that rarefied air. And I know what it's all about. And I know the level that it takes you to. And that's why Richard Holiday is the first ever third time official appearance on MLW. And it will not be the last. You know that, Richard. We're going to hit you up again. Because, like you said, you don't hate us. And that's something we appreciate. Absolutely. Listen, gentlemen, until next time, you're breathing rarefied air. We really are. Thank you very much. Peace, love, and wrestling, guys. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.